Hi, welcome to my short tutorial on RNG, which is Random Number Generator. So there may be a button a player pushes and you want a random effect to happen or a random door that the player cannot choose. Uh, so this is an idea of um, how to make just a randomness in your game and the mechanic uh, that makes it all work. So first we're going to do uh, is place a button. Just any button, a lever, is what I use in examples. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it here on the wall. And we'll give it a message. Uh, we'll get rid of the indicator. And we'll give it a message, start. And we'll put that into the message that it sends. So when a player presses E on this button, it sends the message, start. All right, awesome. Nice and easy. Now for the randomness, uh, this example, I'm going to give you uh, seven, eight options for this one. So we'll go ahead and place a brick down and we'll place a numpad. Uh, hold down shift so you can make it so it's exactly in the middle. You need to do this for it to work properly. So hold down shift, bring it in the middle of the block. We'll go ahead and give that a bird behavior. Uh, we'll make it no indicator. Hit the edit logic button and we'll make the minimum height zero, maximum height zero, so it's always on the ground. Uh, and the minimum height is, uh, width, sorry, is two. So we need to match it here with the max two. So it's always gonna be in that circle. So if we click tab and have a look, you can see it's just gonna spin in a, in a circle, nice and predictable. Awesome. Now, when we select that, you can see that the width is two, meaning two blocks away. So if we go ahead and leave one gap and do a second and we do that, you can see that the bird behavior is directly on those bricks at all times. Awesome. We can also fill in the gaps around it as well. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So for this example, we're gonna have eight different number possibilities. You can decrease them or duplicate them, uh, not a problem, I'll show you that soon. But for now, um, let's give you this example. So I'll go ahead and change the name of this one to bird, so we can find it in a hierarchy. I do have examples below, so let's change it to uh, bird uh, two. So it is different and we can do bird two and then we can do um, drop, we'll call it drop. Now for this one here, uh, we're going to give this one a asset spawner and we'll get rid of the indicator, edit logic and for this one, we want it to spawn an asset. We can do the same thing. So we just click, we'll type in pad, select the numpad. And for the tags, we can do drop. Doesn't need to have collisions, we can turn that off. And the message we want to trigger that is start. So go ahead and put that in the message required. So when this asset spawner gets the message start, which is from our button here, it will drop a numpad with the tag drop on it. So we'll go ahead and click that as a message. Uh, we also need a component. Uh, we want to kill it off later once the result is shown. Uh, so we have to give it a health component if we want it to die. So we'll go ahead and give it a health component. And what we'll do is we will go ahead and just put it above the bird. Uh, click shift and then you can drag it down. So they're stacking on top of each other, just like that. Now what we wanna do is go to our hierarchy. We'll type in bird two and we will put the bird two drop on top of bird two. Now when we press tab, 
you can see that they are sticking on top of each other. And if we click this button, you can see that it drops a numpad in a specific position of where we push the button. Cool. Cool. All right, that's the first step. So that part is working. Now we need uh, speaker components. So we'll go ahead and hold down shift, make sure it's exactly in the middle. And we will make that a speaker component. We'll say hello one, just so you can see it trigger. We want it to detect entity and the entity we want is drop. And we don't want it to detect more than one block range. So it's only gonna detect it in here. So it's not gonna overlap the other ones we put next to it. Um, so we'll go ahead and put that as one. We can duplicate that, hold down shift, make that two. Uh, and a message length is important as well. We don't want it to be there for longer than a second. So go ahead and make auto hide after one second so it can trigger again. So we've got hello one, hello two, and we could duplicate that. And we'll make that hello three. Now let's just test that and make sure these are working. So we can press the E button because we can see it. And you can see hello one. I have something here that triggers that and we can uh, explain more about that later. But for now, I will, um, ah, that one doesn't even turn on. So what I'll do is I'll put that in a wall for now on the other side and we'll look at that soon. And we'll go ahead and test that so we can see that number three works, number two works, number one works, it all shows up. Uh, but they won't re-trigger until these pads disappear. So we need to kill these off when an uh, option is chosen. So we need to bring out another pad. And what we'll do here is we'll hold shift, drag it just above. And for this one, we're going to <clears throat> use another speaker. Um, this one, we don't need a message. We still want it to detect entity and we want it to cover the whole area and it's going to be drop once it does detect it we're going to send a message kill dot drop we'll go ahead and put that in here so what we've done is we've created a speaker component that also looks for the drop component uh, drop tag like these ones do but we're gonna kill it off with this. So kill.drop will be sent when it detects the drop. And we'll just put the message here, kill. So you can see that. So if we go ahead and push one, you can see it's chosen number two and it's also detected it to do the kill. Excellent. Now we want it to kill it. So we'll go ahead and do another pad, hold down shift, line it up and just bring it above. And we'll give this one a message broadcast. We'll go ahead and edit the logic. Uh, we will wait, uh, sorry, wait for broadcast message and that will be your kill.drop. So that's in my paste. We'll go ahead and paste that there. Kill.drop. And we want it to send the message kill because that's the default message of the health component. So we'll go ahead and put that in here. And the message we want to send this to is the tag with drop. So we'll go ahead and say specific uh, tags in range, uh, the range just needs to be small. I think four covers the lot and the tag is drop. So what we've done is uh, the speaker underneath will detect the drop. Uh, 
it will send the message kill drop, which is to this message broadcaster. Um, it will receive the message kill drop and then detect, uh, and then send the message kill to everything in range to the tags that have dropped. So it should kill off the things that, that dropped around. So let's test that out. If we press E, it's picked two, and then it's gone ahead and killed it. So that means we can now push it and get another result. We can push it, get another result. All right, so it's all working as intended. So this one is three. Uh, if you wanna make it easy, you can go clockwise or you can go from left to right, whatever you want. So we can duplicate and make this one four. Uh, duplicate, make this one five. Duplicate, make this one six. Control D to duplicate, hold down shift to snap onto the grid. Seven, and lucky last, eight so now we have a eight option working RNG now I just want to make sure there's no weaknesses it looks like it's all working perfect now all you do for the randomness is if it's pick number one, you have the message when spoken to go somewhere. So when it's uh, selected number one, you can say uh, number one is the message, right? So we'll go ahead and put that in here. Number one. And you can do that for all of them. So number one will be one, number two will be two, number three will be three, and so forth. So you don't need to see me do all of it, but I'll give you two examples. And you can just edit logic. And for number two, you just put here number two. So when these ones are selected, they send a message out that you use for your randomness. So this one here will be number two. If this one's selected, it's number one. Number two, do the same for number three. Number four, um, make them all individual messages. And we can go ahead and bring out a door. Make sure it's not a block. Uh, we'll bring out this one. Go ahead and select it. Um, now I can do it for both. So I'm gonna hold shift, select both doors, get rid of the indicator get rid of the message um, and now here you can do number one number two so what I'll do for this one is this is the first door if we get number one it will open up this door so we'll go ahead and make that as the message required control V nope doesn't want to do it so I'm going to go ahead and manually type that in number one and for the second door uh, we can do number two Fantastic. So if we go ahead and test that out, press tab, you can see if I go up to the doors and press E, nothing happens. But if we use the generator, number two opened. If we use the generator, number one opened. Uh, so you can go ahead and see how the random generator can be used. Now you can do door number three, door number four. Um, all you gotta do is the same thing. You put here, message when spoken, number three, create another place where number three is required. It doesn't have to be doors that open. It can be a spawner that drops a key. 
anything that requires a message in will work. So for this one here, if we edit logic, um, and we go ahead and get rid of these messages required, and we can put something else in here. We can do uh, number three. And we'll put that as the message. So number three and make sure you've got it on the speaker component as well. I know I haven't set it up yet, so we'll do that right now. And edit logic. Go ahead and put that in the message when spoken. So when number three is selected, a message gets sent out. All right, so when number three is selected, it will send a message number three, and we have an object that's actually listening for that, which is the asset spawner, and we can give it whatever we want. So we can do a liquidity key, edit logic. Uh, we can make it so it's pickable or collectible. So we'll go ahead and test that out. So if we get number three in a result, the key is popped out we can go ahead and collect it. If we get number one or number two, the appropriate door opens um, and so forth. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight random numbers that you can use um, as a random number generator. Now, if you want to change that up, it doesn't have to be a bird. You can go ahead and change that to a basic platform where it goes uh, up and down. You can change it to longer distances it can have a lot of speed um, and then all you need to do here same thing is you can move these so they're not in a in a circle but in a flat space make sure you got the good distance around them and same thing, right? So you've got the platform that goes up and down. And when you press E, ah, because I don't have the uh, spawner, if you see the spawner is spawning one away. Uh, so you can change that to zero here and it will spawn on top of itself. Uh, the one is useful for the bird. The zero is useful for on top of the basic platform. So when we use that, we've got two and three at the same time. So you can see there's a distance issue. So these are too close. You can see the blue circle here is overlapping the blue circle there. So all you need to do is give it some more distance. And that's why having these blocks is useful for visualization. So you can see the distance. We know it's going to be one block away. So to make sure they don't overlap, hold shift and give it that appropriate distance. So now when we test again, it's only gonna do it once. We've got our key. And there you go. The only thing is we don't have the kill over here so you can see this here is used to detect so you're going to have to make sure that that's in that range and same with the kill you can always expand it bring it across and you can see now it's killing off the result so you can do a new one and that's how you get random number generator if you have uh, any questions or want to see a little bit more advanced stuff, send me a message on Discord and I'll make a tutorial. Uh, have a great day.